Good morning, and uh, today's an exciting day uh, in the life of our church. Uh, back in August, our leadership team, our elders, met and uh, decided that uh, we, uh, we felt like God was calling us to enter into uh, a two-year initiative uh, for the future of our church and uh, to build on the legacy of our church over the last 30 years and in order for us to continue to have a greater impact, uh, to carry out the mission that God has given us uh, and to have more of an impact in our community, uh, we decided to enter into what is the Forward in Faith Initiative. And I wanna introduce it to you today. Um, when you came in, hopefully you received a booklet. If you didn't receive a booklet, Throw your hand up and my friend Roger will get you one, every adult. There's a, a Chick-fil-A gift card, and, just kidding. Um, <laughs> but if you, I don't, maybe next week, maybe next week, you know, you'll have to show up. Uh, but every adult should have one of these and let me just say before I forget, uh, I want you to bring this with you every, every Sunday over the next uh, five weeks, okay? Every Sunday. Bring it with you. You'll see there's a space to take notes. Uh, I know everybody in here takes copious amounts of notes during the messages. Now you have a place to do that. Uh, there's also some questions and scripture to reflect on uh, as we move throughout this series. So bring this with you every Sunday uh, when you come back during these next few weeks before I forget. Uh, and I, I just want to point out a couple of things in here. Uh, this is a, what we're calling just a booklet, a Ford and Faith booklet, and inside of it you'll see two other uh, documents, and one of them is a Ford and Faith prayer dot card, uh, where you can stick these stickers anywhere. It will remind you to be praying uh, about what God is doing among us, and then finally you'll notice a commitment card. Uh, no one is being asked to fill out a commitment card today. Okay, disclaimer before you you know start getting sweaty and you're you know looking at each other. No one is being asked to fill this out today. Uh, what I would just suggest to you is you put this in a place where you can be praying about uh, what God is doing in your life and what God is asking you to do uh, as a result of that. And so uh, those are the three pieces that hopefully every one of us has uh, today. Now in, in Joshua chapter 3, the Israelites are getting ready to cross over the Jordan. And uh, they're sort of preparing for that. And it says in Joshua chapter 3, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. And then verse 5, it says, Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Forward in faith. Now, uh, this is a very intentional phrase, uh, and there's really two important aspects of that. The one part, the forward part, is about stepping into what God is calling us to do. That life is really about moving forward with God. That we cannot stay where we are. That we cannot just you know, stay idle. We have to continually be moving forward into what God has for us. And the faith part is what is required as we move forward. That in, as you think about your life and your life with God, and, and maybe if you're, whether you're a new believer or you have been a Christ follower for some time, every moment in which you have moved forward with God, I would venture to say has required faith, right? It, they, they go hand in hand. The idea of moving forward is synonymous with faith, that that, is, that that goes together, that every great thing that we set out to do, that we believe God is calling us to do, whether it's individually or, or as a church, 
It requires faith. Now I want you to notice that in verse 4, Joshua says to the people, then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. And there's just this reality that as we think about moving forward in our lives and in the life of this church, that God is going before us. That, that God is going ahead of us. That God is, is moving first. You know, he's, he, we are simply just following Him. We're, he's setting the trail. He's blazing the trail in our lives. The mission of our church is to connect people with Christ, one another, and God's mission. And each aspect of that is, is critically important. Connecting people with Christ. That we are in the business of helping people find and follow Jesus. To, to come to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior and then grow in their relationship with Jesus through Bible reading, through prayer, through the spiritual disciplines, through worship, through serving, through using of their gifts and talents that God has given them. The second aspect, aspect of that, connecting with one another, is that this life, when it comes to life with God, is relational. That, that if we are not connecting with one another, we are missing out on the Christian life. And then connecting with God's mission is discovering what God has called me to do as a part of the body of Christ and then being deployed or being sent out to accomplish that mission where we live, work, and play. That the mission of God is an outward, ever-expanding mission. It is not just to gather once a week and, and then leave and go home and then maybe just do our own thing and then come back and do it again the next week. It is to gather to be encouraged in order to scatter. You'll hear me say that we gather in order to scatter, meaning that we gather because we are equipping ourselves, encouraging ourselves, receiving a word from God to go back out and live on mission for Him in the places He has called us. Now we have a video here that will explain the overview of Forward in Faith, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit more. So check this out. I want to welcome you to the Forward in Faith initiative. The Lord is ready to do amazing things through Legacy Church. And this will happen as each of us chooses to move forward in faith together. In this Forward in Faith initiative, we will fund our ministry plan over the next two years in even bigger and bolder ways, while also raising the capital to offset the expense of a 24-7 home here in Canton and completing much needed renovations to our Marietta campus. Our God-inspired vision is to connect people with Christ, one another, and God's mission. There are numerous ministries we have that help us collectively fulfill that purpose. The first component of our Forward in Faith initiative is to fund our ministry plan, aka budget, for the next two years in even bigger and bolder ways. This is an amazing opportunity for us to build on the legacy of our church and further the mission of Legacy Church. You giving basically enables the church to be able to spend the money in the areas they need to, to have the upkeep done here, to have the community outreach that we do, um, and not, not only locally, but abroad. Uh, that's something that's very important to, to Legacy. Um, and I think you have to have the capital in order to do these things and make a difference. When you have an opportunity to give, first of all, it's going to help other people. We've been, it's been drilled into us for years that our purpose here is to love God and love people. Uh, it's hard to say you really love people if you're not willing to give your resources to, for them. Uh, same thing with God. How can you say you really love God if, if you're not willing to give up your resources? So it's just an opportunity to do what we've, we've been trained to do, really. I totally believe 
that when you give, you get back. And um, it's worked for me my entire life. I'm a single mom of two children, and, and every time I had $5, if I gave $4.99, somehow God would bless me the next week with $10. God is full of surprises. I think, you know, if we're willing and um, our heart is in the right place, that God will have even uh, better things for us. God called Legacy Church to establish ministry centers in Marietta and Kenton. Our responsibility is to have a spiritual impact in both of these communities as one church. The second component of our Forward and in Faith initiative is to raise the capital to offset the expenses of securing a 24-7 home for our Canton campus and completing much needed renovations to our Marietta campus. In doing both of these, we will better position ourselves to further our impact in these communities for Christ. I think you have to take care of your home. Um, you know, you don't let it run down. You do whatever you can to keep it up and to uh, always be ready for other people. And I think also new people come in and, and look to see how we take care of things here in Marietta. Kent needs a 24-7 home because, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but they have to break. First of all, they can't do rehearsals and stuff like you know most churches are able to do. Uh, you can't do that because they're, they're only able to use it on Sundays. So, and, and the setting up and breaking down, unless you're, if you've been a part of that, you don't understand how difficult that is. And they've been doing that for many years. So, uh, it's just a lot to ask for volunteers to do, uh, and to put on a, um, a good production of, of a worship team and, and stuff like that without the appropriate rehearsal time. Very difficult. I totally think we need a 24 seven home. Um, it's I even when I've invited people, they're a little iffy as to is it is the church inside this building? You know, um, it's uh, we need somewhere where we can spend more time than just Sunday. I think it's going to make us able make this church able to continue to grow as as in bringing bringing in new members, um, handling things at a church that need to happen to make sure that we can uh, secure future growth and financial stability to be able to make sure that Legacy Church is uh, you know, a pillar of this community for years to come. We are trusting him to move through his people to invest $2.25 million over these next two years to accomplish this forward and faith initiative and vision that he's given us. We can do this because the $2.25 million is our giving goal. Our primary goal is 100% participation. God can and will do this through us, but as in all things, his desire is that we would work together. His church and his people coming together to accomplish his vision that he's given us. My family and I are totally invested in our forward and faith commitment. We're asking God to give us clarity and reveal to us what sacrifices he's asking us to make in order to make our forward and faith commitment. And I'm simply asking you to do the same, to ask God what he wants you to do, and then do that. It's time to move forward in faith. I am ready to move forward in faith. We want to move forward in faith along with you. Let's go forward in faith. For some reason, the, the phrasing elicits a fist pump. So uh, I don't know what we didn't, they, they weren't asked to do that. It was just natural. Um, you know, I believe that we are stepping into a, a chapter in the life of Legacy Church that is uh, transformational, um, that, that God has done incredible things in the life of our church for the past 30 years, 30 plus years uh, since its beginning. Uh, but that God has led us to a moment in which he's asking us to step out and to move forward in faith. Uh, I believe that this initiative has the, uh, has the potential to be transformative, not just for our church, but for you in your life. As you simply ask God what he's calling you to do and then do that. That's really what faith is. The mission of our church, as I mentioned a moment ago, is to connect people with Christ one another in God's mission. 
And, and I want to just ask you a question to reflect on, not just today, but in the coming weeks, is are you actively helping move the mission forward? Are you actively helping to move the mission forward? Because this initiative is about every single person who calls Legacy their church home coming together to ask God, God, what are you calling us to do? And then to do that. This initiative is about us coming together and collectively asking God what he's calling us to do and then doing that. This initiative is about people coming together with what God has given them and their resources and offering them to God and saying, God, use me and use what you have given me to move your mission forward. Are you actively helping move the mission forward? As you see, saw in the video, the first component of this initiative is to uh, is for further mission. And that's to fund our ministry plan for the next two years in even bigger and bolder ways. Listen, there are some things that we desire to do this next year that that we are asking God to provide the resources to do. We, we have a desire to launch a, a family advocacy ministry uh, because there are hundreds of children in Cherokee County that do not have a home. You know there, there are 400 children in foster care in Cherokee County alone. The population of Cherokee County is 270,000. By comparison, there are the same number of children in foster care in Gwinnett County, but Gwinnett County's population is 1.2 million or thereabouts. So, so the percentage of foster care kids in Cherokee County is way higher than other counties. We should do something about that. We need to do something about that. So we have uh, reached out and, and actually uh, director of an organization called Promise 686 based on Isaiah 686, which says God sets the lonely in families, reached out to me and said, hey, we're, we've got a presence in other metro counties. We're trying to get into Cherokee County. Would your church be interested in partnering with us? And I said, yes, absolutely. You know, let me ask a few people, but yes. <laughs> I mean, you know. But, you know, Jesus said something about it. So to me, it's like there shouldn't really be a discussion on whether or not we should help the marginalized and, and the orphans. And we want to partner with them. And, and there's no cost to have a partnership, but we would like to be able to bless them. They're a nonprofit. They depend on the support of churches. We would be, like to be able to bless them and get a, a family advocacy ministry off the ground because it, it should grieve us, quite honestly, of so many children being without a home. And the reality is that if every Christ follower who attended a church in this county were to take on a foster child, there would be no foster care ministry needed. Like, it would be taken care of. The problem would be wiped out. And so that's one thing. We also, uh, we also have plans to do a kids camp this summer in Marietta. A sports-focused kids camp is an outreach to the community there to reach the hundreds and hundreds of families that live just within two miles of our Marietta campus. That, that's further mission. You may not know this, but Legacy supports missionaries abroad uh, with 10% of our, of our budget going to missions every year. That's about $60,000 that is given away to missionaries both in the United States and around the world. That's been a, his, you know, the history of Legacy Church has always placed a high value on, on missions, and we want to continue to do that and support our missionaries and give them a raise. I think most of our missionaries that we support have been at the same support level for many years now. Well, we all know the cost of living has not been at the same level. The cost of living is not what it was. We want to be able to be more generous with those people that have given their lives to carry the message of Jesus across the world. And there's other things that we desire to do. A further impact is, is raising the capital 
for a 24-7 home for this campus, for Canton, and making much needed renovations for Marietta. Now, this has been a long journey. I mean, we've been meeting in this building for, I think, eight years now, and, and we've had the same faithful group of men and women setting up and tearing down for, for that entire time. You know, Lyle and Rodney back there, we're going to, when we leave this building, we're going to leave a statue here <laughs> to honor them because, you know, every single Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, they get here and start carrying stuff out of the pod and others on our, you know, to set up and tear down team. AJ, I mean, AJ's got a, a baby for crying out loud and he's showing up, setting up all this stuff. And others of you I know have been a part of that. And, you know, that's a ministry. Uh, but uh, the time has come for us to move forward. I mean, the time has is, is come for us to step out on faith and, and move into a 24-7 space. And listen, it, this is not about a building, okay? It's not about a building. A building is just a building. It's just a tool. It, it, it is just a tool for us to accomplish our mission. Jesus never said... Move into a building, okay? That's not what this is about. This is about fulfilling the mission of connecting people to Christ, one another, and God's mission. I thought it was interesting you heard Michelle talk about she invites people and they're kind of confused about, you know, does the church meet in the county building or where is it exactly? Is it, is it there during the week? Is it only there on Sunday? Like, that's why we want, we want to have a more consistent and stable presence in this community so that people know Legacy Church is here to bless the community. Whether we are in a 24-7 home, a 24-hour home, a 48-hour, it doesn't matter. We exist to bless the community in those ways. One thing I've realized from this scripture, one thing I want us to be reminded of, is that God always goes before us. Look back at verse 3. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Every great thing, as I mentioned earlier, that God is asking us to do in our personal life and in the life of our church, God always goes before us. So, so you, I, some of you are seeing this initiative for the first time and you're processing it, I know, and I want to give you time to process it. And maybe one of your reactions is, man, that seems like a, a huge endeavor. I mean, you look around, it's like, man, we, we got about 40 people here this morning. That seems like a huge endeavor. But nothing is too big when God goes before us. Nothing is too great when God goes before us. But moving forward requires surrender. Surrendering to what God is calling us to do. Joshua 24, 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. If you come to our house, we have this verse on a on a frame that someone gave us uh, when we got married you know, 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now. And you know, it's, it's right before you leave to go out the door, you see this, this sign with the scripture on it. And for me, it's a reminder that my primary calling in life is to love God. And my, my secondary calling is to love the family that he's given me with, with everything that I have. To lead my family in a way that God has called me to lead them. And that's a reminder, I think, for all of us. That if, if serving the Lord is what we are choosing, then we choose to do that with complete surrender. We are at a time in our culture where following Jesus, all of the conveniences are being stripped away. All of the things that created what I call cultural Christianity, where going to church was motivated from maintaining status in society or in a community, 
And all those things are being stripped away where all the conveniences are now being removed. I believe what God is doing in our cultural moment is He is refining us. He's taking us through a process of refining to test our faith to determine who is really in this. And I think forward in faith can be the same thing for Legacy Church. A process of refinement where God is testing us to really determine who is in this. And so I want to ask you, are you surrendered to the purposes of God through our church? Are you surrendered to the purposes of God through our church? That's a, that's a humbling question. That's a big question. And you may, you may see that question as you're thinking about it. Forward in faith, listen, is an opportunity for you and for me to be surrendered to the purposes of God through our church. You know, I love what Jesse said as he sang that song where we're asking God to sort of shake up our soul. You know, I would say forward in faith is we're asking God to shake up our church. We're asking God to, to move us and stir us to align our hearts more with his mission that he's given us. That's what this is about. If you look down, verse 14, it says, so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest, yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap in a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zerethan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of Araba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had, completely, had completed the crossing on dry ground. Now the Jordan River is, now I'm six foot seven and I, I stood in the Jordan River in Israel about four years ago. And it came up to my waist at the part, the, at least the, the section that we were, you know, in the Jordan River. It was about waist high for me, you know, which most people was about, you know, chest high. But, but think about this, that the leaders went first so that all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. So I want you to know that the leadership of this church, including myself, is completely invested in this initiative. Megan and I will make the largest commitment that we've made to, to this church and to any church in our marriage. And we're having that conversation about sacrifices that we can make and that God is asking us to make as to be part of this, to go ahead. Because I believe that's what leader, leadership does. Leadership goes ahead. Leadership goes first. You know, leadership shows the rest of the people. And that's what happens in this scripture where the priest stepped into the water and by the power of God, the water was halted. And so in this Forward in Faith initiative, the leadership of this church is going first. Faith is moving forward. Paul says in, in Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14, he says, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The goal is eternity with God. That's what 
That's what Paul is saying here. The goal to which he is pressing towards is eternal life with God through Christ. And he says, I am forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. He's talking about life with God, eternity with God, forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is, he ha- what is ahead. And in a sense, we are forgetting what is behind. As we honor the legacy of our church and step into the, the next chapter of the life of our church, we have to have the same posture of pressing on. He uses the word straining because it's not easy. It's, it's going to be challenging. There will be times in the next few years where you might wonder, hey, is this going to work out? Is, is, it going to, is it going to be successful? Listen, it's going to be successful. And you heard it in the video. The primary goal of this initiative is 100% participation. The number goal that you see, that is just a number. That is an opportunity for each of us to ask God what he's calling us to do. The first goal is that every person who calls legacy their home participates. And if every person who calls legacy their church home participates, we are going to see amazing things happen. Because what happens as as people individually and families begin to take steps to, to trusting God more, to stepping into what God is calling them to do, asking them to do, as we see that happening, it just, it's going to be a snowball effect across the church of people and families trusting God more and more in their life. And that grows our faith. And that collectively moves us to a greater dependence on God. And ultimately making a greater impact in the mission of God. Listen, since I've come back from Australia... I have faced the most intense period of criticism in, the, in, in my entire 20 plus years of ministry. Now I know it shocks you to hear that, that church people would, would be critical. But, but I have faced the most intense period of criticism in my entire ministry life and I share that not to, not to gain your sympathy or not to, to have you go, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I wish you, you know what? Those people are so mean. I'm not sharing it for those reasons. I'm sharing it because I believe it's happening because God is preparing us to do something great among us. There is no other explanation other than God is preparing us to do something great. Because If we're not facing criticism, if we're not facing challenges, if we're not facing hardships, we must not be following God's will. The enemy does not want us to engage in this initiative. The enemy does not want you to engage in this initiative. Because the results of this initiative will be that more people are reached with the hope of Jesus. More people like my friend Michelle, who's not here today, but she's usually here. She's usually setting up the coffee. She's usually that person that you see when you walk down those stairs and the first person that's smiling, other than me. I mean, I know you're not here to see my smile, but you pass me and you come down and you see Michelle. Michelle's battling cancer. She's at the emergency room, as we shared this morning. She texted me and said she can't be here. She's got the new... She buys the, 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 the good creamer. She said, I've got more creamer with me, and I'm sorry. So I, I took, maybe it's old creamer. I don't know. <laughs> check the date. Just a little disclaimer. Check the date. And I borrowed a couple of waters from the convention center. You know, they can charge us. I don't care. But we're doing this for, for more people like Michelle. And I can say that because she's not here, so she won't get embarrassed. But more people like Michelle who are facing a a personal crisis and have found a, a spiritual family here in our church. 
There are many, many more people like Michelle, and maybe it's not cancer, but maybe it's a marital struggle or a financial struggle or an addiction or some sort of uh, you know, bout with anxiety or depression and people that desperately need the hope of Jesus. The thousands of people in this community alone. That's, what for, that's who Forward in Faith is for. Forward in Faith is for the people who are going to be sitting in the chairs next to you that are not yet here. Or the children that are not yet born that will grow up and find faith at Legacy Church. Or the people that are here and, and they, they're giving God a last shot and their faith is renewed. Over a quarter of Americans are now religiously unaffiliated. 29% I was reading. And of those 29%, 71% of that group has a religious background. So many of the people that we are trying to reach do have some sort of religious background, but they've been turned off from the church for various reasons, whether it was a, a scandal or a situation of abuse or a misuse of power by leadership or, or they've just drifted away from their faith. They've had a personal crisis and they've turned from God because they grew up believing that God was obligated to bless them entirely and that no difficulty would come their way if they followed God. And then a tragedy happened and their faith was blown up. But most of the people that we're trying to reach do have some sort of religious background. And I say that just to say because that's what Forward in Faith is about. And i got to quit. But I want to ask you, I want to go back to this question. Are you completely surrendered to the purposes of God through our church? This is not even about Legacy Church, actually. This is about the purposes of God that God has called Legacy to carry out those purposes. We are just the vehicle. And here's the deal. The purposes of God do not depend on whether or not Legacy Church exists. But God is inviting us to be the vehicle through which His purposes are fulfilled in this community. That's what God has called us to do. And the time for playing church is over. The time for being the church is here. So are you completely surrendered to the purposes of God through our church? I cannot wait to see what God does through you and through us as we together move forward in faith. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we ask that you would you would just reveal yourself even more so to us today, Lord. God, we are standing on the edge of the Jordan. As the Israelites stood on the edge of the Jordan, entering into what you have called them to do, God, we are standing on the edge of what you are calling us to do. And God, we have many, many faithful people who have brought us to this point, who the, the stories of what you have done through this church for the last 30 plus years, we have those stories as a part of who we are. And God, as, as we look into what is next for us, those stories propel us. Those stories push us forward to keep going, to keep carrying the message and hope of Jesus to this community as we have, not just in Canton, but in Marietta, Lord, for 30 plus years. God, we're asking you to refine us, to prepare us for what you have for us. Knowing that on the other side of that is seeing more people 
transformed by the hope of Jesus. More people like Michelle, more people like others in this room, Lord, whose lives have been changed by the hope of Jesus. God, we want to see more stories like that. We want you to use us to see your purposes move forward in this community. We're asking you to give us the faith, Lord. We cannot stay where we are without faith. We cannot move forward without faith. We're asking for that faith to move forward. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.